Good evening, everybody. Good evening. God bless you. Good evening. Good evening, and God bless you to everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Night Teaching here at Church of the Harvest International. I'm your servant leader, Bishop Neil Roberson. Most certainly, I thank God for all of you that are on with us on tonight. I want to say good evening to all of you. Call somebody. And uh, invite them on tonight to share with us tonight. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Call a friend, tell a friend, tune in to Tuesday night's teaching. We've got a great word for you on tonight, and I pray that it will bless your hearts tremendously. Uh, I'll sing a song for you tonight. I'll give you guys a chance to come on in. Come on, y'all. Let's get these numbers up. Let's get these numbers up. As you're coming on tonight, I'm going to ask you to share. As you're coming on tonight, I'm going to ask you to please share, share. Push that share button and uh, come on with me tonight. Make sure you push that share button. Push that share button. Everybody that's coming on, push the share button with me tonight. Make sure you do that. I'm depending on you press that share button let's get these numbers up tonight uh people that are listening tonight people need a word from the lord and let's push that button everybody's coming on press the share button push that share button now and let's share tonight's uh, service on tonight let's share the service on tonight let's pray father in jesus name we love you and we thank you for this time of sharing we thank you for your anointing that makes the difference i pray that you would touch tonight and let this time that we share together be fruitful for your glory in the name of jesus i pray let the hearer be blessed tonight let the word fall on good ground and uh, saturates the hearts of your people we ask it in jesus name amen and thank you jesus amen and thank you jesus we thank you for this time of sharing please share the broadcast with somebody let them know that we're on tonight and we're most certainly sharing with you tonight join us come on uh, push the share button as you're coming into our service tonight. Push the share button as you're coming into our service on tonight. And we thank God for all of you that are sharing. Please push that share button and let's enjoy the Lord together tonight. I'm going to sing a song with you tonight and let's just praise God together tonight. Come on. Come on. Here we go. Come on. Push that share button. Come on. Let's enjoy the Lord tonight. I said, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Oh, be my friend. Come on. Yeah, can't nobody do me. Man, I got people calling. <laughs> I put do me like Jesus. Oh, can't nobody do me like the Lord. Oh, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Because he's my friend. 
me up and he turned me around. Turn me around. Turn me around. Nobody can do me like the Lord can. Most certainly, God bless you on tonight. Do me a favor, tap your friend, call somebody, and invite them on the line tonight. Come on, invite somebody on the line tonight. Invite them in tonight. Invite them in. Push and share. That's right, push and share tonight. Share with someone tonight. Share with them tonight. As we um, get ready to go into the Word tonight, I want you to share this broadcast with someone as we do that tonight. Please do that for me. There's another song I'm going to do tonight. One more song I'm going to do tonight. And um, I'm going to get that air off me. I'm going to get that air off of me. Yes. And I'm going to do another song on tonight. And my prayer is that God would bless you as a result. Here's the song I recorded. Mm. I lost my way so many times. No, I did it wrong. I should have did it right Here I am, Lord Down on my knees Begging you, Lord To restore me Restore 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 me 
Restore me, Lord. Restore me. Restore me, Lord. Restore me. Lord, I need you to restore me. You gave me what I wanted, but my sins erased it away. Mercies each and every day. Lord, here I am down on my knees, begging you, Lord, please restore me. Restore, restore. I need you to restore me. I know I won't please. To restore me. I know I've done wrong so many restore times. Please, Lord, restore me. Oh, 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 Lord, I need you to. Please, Lord, restore me. God to restore us in such a crucial time as now. Get your Bibles in your hands and let's go to the Word of God. Let's go to the Word of the Lord and um, let's see what God has to say to us tonight. I want you to turn your Bibles with me to, first of all, go with me to, um, let me see here. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. Let's go to Luke chapter 13. Mm, mm, mm. I want you to pray for the Howard family. My family was trying to call me. Um, my family was trying to call me while I was on the line. And um, my auntie just passed away. Mother Howard just passed away. So one of my aunties just passed away, so they was trying to contact me while I was while I was on the line, and I wasn't. I knew they kept calling, and I I couldn't answer. So, um, so, well, let's just pray for them now, Father, in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Mm, thank you, Jesus. Father, I've asked now in the name of Jesus that you would touch. Howard family right now in the name of Jesus Father I know you're able to do exceeding abundantly above anything that we can ask or think in the name of Jesus touch our family today in the name of Jesus I ask it in the name of Jesus that you heal the wounds 
Oh, God, thank you, Father. Be merciful, Father. Be merciful, be kind, God. Be merciful, be kind, God. In the name of Jesus. Father, I know you're able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. Heal tonight. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Amen. Uh, Luke chapter 13. Pray for my family. Pray for me tonight. Shouldn't have looked at my messages. I should have just kept going. Luke chapter 13 and verse number um, make sure I get that right. Luke chapter 13, starting at verse number 6. Starting at verse number 6. Here's what it says. He spake also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said, unto, said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on the fig tree and find none. Cut it down, why cumbereth it the ground? And he answered and said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year alone, this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. I want you to go now to um, uh, to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21. And at verse number 18. Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 18. That's why I want to go down. Lord, give us strength. Matthew chapter 21 and verse number 18. Thank you, Jesus. God, we give you glory and we thank you for it now. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Matthew chapter 21, verse 18. Here's what it says. Now in the morning, as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, he said unto it, let no fruit grow on thee, hence forward forever. And presently the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, if ye have faith and doubt not, ye shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if ye shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. Um, just a real simple message tonight. It's, it's not a rewarmed up message, but it's a message that the Lord spoke to me today, today rather, and said to me, don't forget to tell the people to recalibrate. <laughs> We're in a season of recalibration, rather you want to recalibrate or not whether you can hear me or not, whether you trust what I'm saying or not, this is a season of recalibration. God is recalibrating the church. God is recalibrating his people. Everything, God is recalibrating it in this season. This is a season of 
of of of recalibration. What do you, what do you mean by that, Bishop? Um, I, I told the story to our church some time ago. And for those of you that are listening tonight, thank you and God bless you for being on, on with me tonight. I said this story to our church some time ago. I said to them that I, I weighed myself on a bad faulty scale. The scale weighed me in at one weight. And I knew that weight was not true. And after going to the doctor and being weighed on a real scale, the Lord spoke something to me that night after I got on that scale on the side of the bed when I was praying. He said, just as that scale weighed in wrong, people's lives are weighing in wrong. He says, that scale needs to be recalibrated. And so does the life of the believer. Now, when the Lord spoke this to me, he spoke it to me at the beginning of the year. I began to speak this message at the beginning of the year. God said two things to me. He said that 2020 would be a year that you do ministry to the masses. But at the same time, he told me it was a year to recalibrate. Recalibrating, uh, dealing with the fact that we live in a time where people are not who they say they are. And because of this, um, the saying, fake it till you make it, is no longer any good. Because we've hit a dead end. Now you're faking it till you make it has been found out. Because during this season, fakers are phony. They've always been phony, but we've always been able to hide behind the pews and hide behind the faces of the people in the pews. But now there are no people in the pews. There are only empty churches in shadows and memories of the past of the way things used to be. You can no longer vibe off of the anointing of, or rather off of the noise of the crowd shouting back. There is no shouting back crowd. You can no longer scream and holler or, or take it to another gear because somebody starts shouting over in that corner or hollering over in that corner and it made you take it up. The musicians playing in the corner and organ players screaming the organ and you yanking it and hollering, all of that has been silenced. Everything is quiet now. Now people who walked with God for years are going on to be with Jesus. And people are dying around us. And as Reverend Jasper Williams said, people are running through the streets and dying through the streets like June bugs in the summer sun. What do you do now? that you've reached a dead end to all of the things that you've been faking it till you make it. Now you got to square up and become real because now it's just you and the camera. You in the hearts of those that are watching you for an authentic, genuine, anointed word that comes straight from the heart of God. No screaming, no hollering, no running, just people browsing through Facebook and stumble across your page, they think. No doubt about it, there are those of you right now, you browse through the page and came across me and now you're looking at me and you're saying, let me go on to something else, but something is making you wait to see what I'm going to say next. And let me tell you what that is. That's the Holy Ghost. Because you know and I know both that your life weighs in the balance. What do you mean weigh in the balance? Your wife or your life has weighed you wrong. 
You faked it till you make it for so long until you actually believe the hype about what you're faking. I mean, I'm talking about to the point where you you fake it till you make it so long and fake it till you make it and do nothing but just lying until it comes to pass. And what the truth is, you lied to yourself for so long until you actually believe the lie that you told yourself. You've become a victim of your own conversation. I'm preaching better than y'all hidden hearts. And what the Lord is saying to us tonight is he's called for a time of recalibration. God says, I've called for a time of recalibration, not for just the church, but for the entire world. God says, it's time to recalibrate. Glory, hallelujah. I'm going to say some things tonight. That's going to challenge you in your walk. Challenge you with your walk. Tonight I've come to preach to you because I want you to have a more, um, how can I say it? Uh, not just quantity, but a more quality life. God wants you to have a more quality life. But there is no way that you can have a quality life if you don't be honest with yourself. You've got to be honest with yourself tonight. No more faking it till you make it. Now you've got to tell yourself the truth. Uh, Bishop, I thought I, and I hear this, I, I, thought I, I thought we're supposed to call those things as not as though they were you are. Those are moves of faith. I'm talking about faking it till you make it, lying to yourself, making yourself believe something stupid. No, no, that's that's there's a thin line between faith and foolishness. God is calling for you tonight to operate. Glory, hallelujah. In the spirit of truthfulness. Recalibrate. The Bible says, watch this. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 13, watch this, in Luke chapter number 13. In this passage of scripture, the Bible says that he spake this parable about a certain man who had planted a fig tree in the vineyard and he came and sought fruit on the tree and found none. So he said to the person that was over the vineyard in verse number seven, he says to the dresser or the one who tills the ground or tends to the ground, he says to him, he says, I've come to this ground. I've come to this plot of land. I've come to this place, to this person who've been faking it till they make it. I've come here for three years seeking fruit on the tree. See, the thing about faking it till you make it, there are not, there's nothing on a fake tree. It just looks good. This tree behind me just look like a good tree. That tree ain't real. That tree is plastic. And you can fake it back there that tree can fake it as long as it wants to fake it. But if it's an apple tree and eventually I walk in the house and hungry and reach back behind me to get an apple and it's no longer there or it's, it's never been there. It's just been a pretty shiny green leaf fake tree. Glory, hallelujah. He says, I came looking for fruit and found none. So he tells the dresser of the vineyard he says to him, cut it down. Glory, hallelujah. He says, cut it down. Then he uses the word, he says, why cumbereth the ground? He says, why, why, why cumbereth the ground? And what that word cumbereth mean, he says, why continue to let it take up space? Some of you all, before this pandemic, was in church, just taking up space with no fruits and no results on your tree. As a Christian, as a believer, as a, as a, as a believer, as one who walked with God, our job is to produce fruit. Every believer is a tree. And that tree 
is supposed to produce fruit. Okay, you, you, you didn't love last year. Well, that should be developed now. You didn't have patience last year. Well, that should be developed or developing now. Some of the things that I oftentimes talk about giving, some of us been in church for 50 years and still has not mastered tithing. It's because you're not growing. You're taking up space. You're not growing. The master says, why cumber that ground? Why keep wasting ground? Why keep letting that thing sit there and waste the ground? He says, cut it down. Woo! And you better thank God that somebody prayed for you. He says, why continue let it to take up space? Why continue let it to take up space? And then the other scripture I gave you in the, uh, in uh, Matthew's chapter 21, it tells you in verse 18, he says that uh, Jesus, uh, in the morning, he returns into the city and he's hungry. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, the scripture says in verse 19, there's a fig tree in the way. He came to it and found nothing on it, but leaves. Lord, help me. Some of our lives are producing nothing but leaves. What leaves, Bishop? Dressed up like you're on your way to church, you're looking like a Christian. Big Christian hat on, two piece Armani suit, nice tie, leaves. Praise the Lord, leaves. Jumping and shouting, leaves. Jumping and shouting with no fruit on the tree. Jumping and shouting, but still talking about people. Jumping and shouting but don't get along with nobody. Jumping and shouting, still rebellious. Jumping and shouting, still hateful. Jumping and shouting, still don't give. Jumping and shouting. Leaves. And the Lord is saying, I'm calling for a church after this pandemic that are no longer a church operating that's looking like a church. But not walking in the anointing of a church. Jesus says, I want my church back. Jesus said, I want the ecclesia back. The people that I originally called out, I want those people back. I want the church to look like the church. I need the church to have the power that it once had. In Acts chapter number 2, Verse 42 through 47, the Bible says that they brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. He distributed among the people, and the people had all things in common. Wasn't nobody hungry, wasn't nobody nothing, wasn't nobody going through that because the people trust their leader. But the integrity of the church is almost shot. Jesus says, I want the original the original blueprint of my church back. Said this church that we put together today is not the church that I gave birth to. He said, that's not my church. Voting on preachers and putting them out and fighting at the church. He said, that ain't none of my church. She said, I've always designed for a church and a leader to be put in by succession. Moses Handed it down to Joshua. Jesus gave it to the disciples. Paul had Timothy. Succession. Moses. Come on now. To Joshua. Come on now. If we've made up rules and regulations that are not, not according to the word of God. And because of that, we don't have the church that Jesus originally ordained. Help me, Jesus. Now, give, now, keep, now keep it, keep it, keep, keep this in perspective. That preachers are not who they're supposed to be, which is called the people to go astray from who they're supposed to be. And so God has called all of us in the house to sit down so all of us can get it, so we can get it all right. And God says, everything that ain't right, I'm going to move it before the pandemic is over. You hear what I'm saying to you now? Just let the preacher speak to you. You know, during this pandemic, God is doing a weeding out too. We don't want to accept that. Oh, we don't want to accept it. 
But during this pandemic, God is moving stuff out the way that won't get out the way. During this pandemic, God is moving members out the way that won't move, preachers out the way that won't move. And I'm not saying this is the case in, in everybody. But I'm saying there's some folk that's just in the way. God's just getting them out the way. He said, come on, you move out the way. Get, move, move. And that's not everybody now. There's some people that, that are saved. It's just their season of graduation, their season of promotion. God's promoting some higher in this season. God's saying your work is done. Come on up high and receive your reward. That's for some. But for some, God is saying, come on, go to heaven before you end up going to hell. Come on. Come on. Glory, hallelujah. Then some of us is just getting evicted. God's finding some preachers in the process and letting them live, but he find them. You fired. Come on, you fired. You fired. He just find, he find deacons, he find preachers, he find members, he find musicians, he find everybody. That's some people, that's going to, when you go back to church, you're going to see things that like it used to be. They're getting fired in the process. Why? Because God don't need no faking until you make it church. The church needs to have its power back. The church needs to have its anointing back. Glory to God. But it'd be like the one man that brought his son to Jesus' disciples and said, uh, and, uh, my son is vexed with the spirit. Get him out. And the disciples couldn't do it. And Jesus says, bring the boy over here. Then after a while, the disciple says, why couldn't we do this? And Jesus said, because this kind comes out by prayer and fasting. This is a season of prayer and fasting. A season of consecration season of getting right with God. Glory, hallelujah. Share. Come on, push the share button. Somebody need to hear this message. Push that share button. Jesus came to the city. He's hungry. Nothing on the tree but leaves. And then all of a sudden Jesus, because he was hungry, he says, let nothing grow from this tree from now on. He cursed that tree and it withered up. There are going to be some churches wither up when this is over. Just wither. Just, just wither up. And there's going to be some churches on the other side of this pandemic that's just going to blossom. Hundreds are going to show up. Thousands are going to come show up. People are going to show up by the masses. Watch. Watch what I tell you. On the other side of this pandemic, there's going to be supernatural growth to some places and a withering to other places. Some of you all who wouldn't walk away from them relationships that were no good to you, they're going to wither up before the pandemic is over. Some of the men you wouldn't leave alone, they just gonna go on their way during this pandemic because they can't come over. Y'all ain't saying <laughs> you better hear what I'm telling you. There's a withering, there's a trash burning in this season. Chloe, hallelujah. How do we, Bishop, recalibrate? Well, first of all, the first thing is the reason why the church is not growing. And faking like it's faking is because of what we call excess nitrogen. What happened to the tree? What happened to the tree that the tree uh, uh, would not produce? The, the dresser in the vineyard, the master comes to the vineyard. He comes through uh, and he checks the tree and he said, in these last three years, nothing has grown on this tree. Jesus comes to the city and he sees the tree and ain't nothing on it but leaves and no fruit on the tree. Why were there no fruit on the tree and why didn't the tree in the vineyard grow? Number one, excess nitrogen. Excess nitrogen. What does this mean? This happens when figs are surrounded by lawn that's being fertilized with high nitrogen products. What does that mean? For the spiritual man. What what uh this happens when you hanging out with heavy religious people, but low people in relationship with God. Yeah, excess nitrogen. You're hanging out with people that look spiritual, but you know they ain't spiritual. Hallelujah. Yeah. Excess nitrogen. You hanging out with people. That know they don't mean the church no good. They against your pastor. You know they talk against your pastor. And just because you're passive in the relationship with them, and you don't want to upset nobody, 
you won't say nothing. And you know you need to cut them people off. And because of that, there is no growth in your life because God can't trust you. Heavy in religion, they're heavy in religion, but low in relationship. They grow fast in quotes, but slow in the word. They always got a quote. One time a man stood up in the Bible and told me, like the Bible said, a family that pray together, stay together. I said, boy, that ain't in no Bible. They, they, they fast in quotes, slow in the word, swelling but not growing. Glory, hallelujah. You like dancing, but you don't like praying and reading. Access nitrogen. You got to get the tree from around that kind of environment because that kind of environment causes the tree not to bear fruit, causes it not to grow. You can't run with the same people and expect to grow like you're supposed to grow. It ain't going to happen. Sometimes you got to just get away from people. You got to cut them off. Hey, man, hey, this is where... In this season, this is the season of the cutting off. And some of y'all couldn't cut them off, so God let the pandemic come so y'all couldn't be around each other. Don't you come out of this pandemic and go back into the relationship with those people. Leave them where they're at. Change the phone number now. Cut them off now. God cut them off for you because you wouldn't cut them off. Don't come out of this and go back into those sour uh, 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 relationships that don't mean nothing. Are you hearing me tonight? Excess nitrogen, uh, nitrogen, heavy in religion, low in relationship. Number two, why didn't that tree grow? Lack of pollination, a lack of pollination. Some of you saints remember this. A lack of pollination. Oh, my, my. A lack of pollination. What does that mean? A lack of pollination. Yep. Number one, excess nitrogen. Number two, a lack of pollination. What does that mean? So figs produce, listen at this, figs produce best when you've got two or more around to cross pollinate with them. Some types of self fruitfulness. But but even but even they produce better with a partner nearby. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What does that mean? See, lack of pollination. Listen, a tree cannot grow good sitting in a vineyard by itself sometimes. But you need to cross-pollinate with other believers who believe like you believe. I'm not talking about believe in your rituals. I'm talking about believe in the word. When the saints come together and pray, we grow strong together. What? You forsake not the assembling of ourselves together. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord. The wrong people with your faith would damage you. You got to cross-pollinate with other Believers cross pollinate with other prayer warriors, cross pollinate with other people fasting, other people reading the word. You got to cross pollinate, you got to plant your tree in the ground with other trees that are being fruitful. Iron sharpens iron. Glory, hallelujah! Hallelujah. You save and got the Holy Ghost, and you cross pollinating with a stripper. You save and got the Holy Ghost. And you cross pollinate with some joke that's cussing and, and clubbing and ran and tan and uh, what's wrong with you? Well, we grew up together. I don't care if you did grow up together. You ain't supposed to cross pollinate with those people. The Bible say, come out from among them and be ye separated from them. You got to separate yourself. How can two walk together except they agree? You got to come out from among the world. I don't care if it's your brother or sister. I'll never forget when my brother, he's going on to heaven now. 
when he first got saved, I wasn't saved. And we used to sing together and travel together. One day my brother walked up to me and told me, say, hey, man. I said, what's that? He said, I'm not singing in a group no more. And I'm not going with you no more. I'm through because I'm saved and I'm not going to be with you. I said, why? He said, because you got too big of an influence on my life and I'm not going to hell for you. And he cut me off until I got saved. And when I got saved, he came running back. He says, I'm not going to jeopardize my soul fooling around with you, with your negative self. That's why I cut, I, I start blocking people on Facebook because I don't want that, that, I don't want that negative feed coming across my feed. Because I don't want to hear your negative talk. Some people ain't got nothing positive to say. That stuff will cause you not to grow. Come on here now. You better hear me now. There's going to be a change on the other side of this thing. Eh? It's, it's, you ain't got to change. But Neil Robeson going to change. Because I need God more than I need you. Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> Help me, Jesus. Lack of pollination. Watch this one. Watch this one. The other reason why that tree won't grow like it's supposed to is because of a lack of sun. You know, the first thing is S-U-N, but it's also the S-O-N. For the natural tree, it's the lack of sun. Certain fig trees have to be exposed to a certain amount of sun. I got a question for you. How's your sun exposure? Figs are sun lovers that need at least six to eight hours of full sun a day to fruit well. In order to produce fruit well, fig trees have to have six to eight hours of sun a day. Well, can I tell you something? So does the believer. The believer has to have a certain amount of sun every day. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. A fig tree must love the sun. How do you call yourself a believer, but you don't care about the sun or the things that the sun care about? A fig tree needs lots of sun. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Why don't the tree grow? A lack of sun. Lack of sun. You need more sun concern. You need to be concerned about the sun, the things that the sun, Jesus says to his father, Lord, teach them to love like we love. Teach them to care like we care. He says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. The tree cannot grow when it does not have a certain amount of sun a day. When the last time you read the Bible for a couple of hours a day? How often do you talk to the Lord? How often do you talk to the Lord? Do you talk to the Lord all day? Do you have the kind of relationship that you and the, you and the, you and the sun talks? How's your fellowship with the sun? If you don't have a strong fellowship with the sun, it answers the reason why sometimes you just don't grow like you're supposed to. You're growing crooked. You're growing out of balance. And that's why in this pandemic, the, the, the truth of the matter is, a lot of y'all just scared. That's why you ain't going out. You scared. You scared you're going to catch something. You ain't being careful. You just scared. Well, I ain't scared. I'm just careful. Call me what you want to call me. I'm careful. And I'm teaching people to be careful. I didn't say fearful because I'm not fearful. Job said the thing that I feared the most came upon me. I'm not fearful. I'm just careful. I'm not going to put myself in harm's way to catch something when I know the, the, the way to, uh, to, 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 be, to avoid it is to stay out around it. I'm safe in my home. Glory, hallelujah. Lack of sun. You must have a sun relationship. You must spend quality time with the sun. Time and fellowship. 
Hallelujah. Time and fellowship. Time and fellowship. Time. He, I'm going to give you one more. I didn't give this to Tamara, but I'm going to give you one more. Some of us have what we call a watering issue, a lack of water. A lack of water. Because consistent moisture and well-drained soil are ideal for most trees. It's possible to overdo it and put too much water. Every believer need balance in his life. Every, every believer need balance in his life. Too much of anything is unhealthy. Too less of some things are unhealthy. How do you know it's too less? And how do you know it's too much? You know it's not enough when the joy that you used to have you no longer have it anymore. You depend on the Holy Spirit to speak to you. You know when you're not where you need to be at. You know it. It's called uh, discernment. The Holy Spirit speaks to your discernment and tells you you have a lack of water in your life. You're not watering your life. Jesus says that my word is, is, is the water of life. He tells the woman at the well, he says, you give me the drink, and if, if you knew who I was, I'd give you the drink. He says, and there'll be an everlasting well springing forth out of you. The word of life, it's water that, that springs, gushes out of you. It's called living water. The word of God is living water. You need the living water to keep your life moisturized. <laughs> You need the living word to keep you moisturized so you're not hateful and mean and snappy and going off in the house. You need to moisturize your life with the word so that when you're headed in the wrong direction and saying something to your wife or saying something to your husband or about to kick the dog and push the kids down, the word of God that, that bubbles up inside of you begin to speak to you and say, no, 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 we don't do that. You go to the store, get in line, somebody cut you off or somebody cut you off while you're driving and put their thing up at you while you're driving. And you want to snap back that moisturize, the word that's inside of you springs up inside of you and causes you to operate in the spirit in which God has called you to operate. These are the things that we must do if we expect God to use us through this pandemic and after this pandemic, you gotta recalibrate. What I've taught you tonight will cause you to recalibrate. If none of that checks out and you still get no fruit this year, try cutting back. Because the master is coming back through again. The young man begs for the tree, remember? He says, leave it alone for one more year and let me dig around it and dung around it. Let me get down to the root of what the problem is. In this time of uh, retreat, I say, somebody say quarantine, but this time of spiritual retreat is one for us to check our lives. Because remember now, remember now, 2020 is the year of recalibration. Will we recalibrate? Because Christ is going to visit this tree again. This ain't the first time. And this ain't the last time we'll go through this pandemic. Hear what I'm saying to you. There will be a revisitation. And those of us that are standing on the word of God, fully calibrated, upstanding, walking upright before God, walking in righteousness and holiness will stand the test of time. Those of y'all faking it till you make it, you've been found out. But it's not too late. It's not too late. Let me pray for you tonight. You no longer have to fake it till you make it. You've made it. 
Jesus loves us so much until he sent his son Jesus so that we have a right to give us another chance to recalibrate. I'm going to pray for you tonight that you'd make a decision for recalibration tonight. It's your night tonight. In spite of all that we've gone through during this pandemic, it's still your time of recalibration. Thank you, Jesus. Father, I thank you tonight. I love you. I appreciate you for the word tonight that we've hidden in our heart that we might not send against you. We trust you. We thank you. We believe you. Bless your people. Bless those that are hearing tonight, that are listening tonight, that have been blessed by this word tonight. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that we make conscious decisions to do better than we've done in the past. In the name of Jesus. I ask it in Jesus' name. Then, Father, if there'll be one other sound of my voice that's not saved, as they repeat after me, that they get saved. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my soul. Be the Lord of my life. I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. I believe he died for my sins. I believe he was buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead with all power in his hands. In the name of Jesus, be the Lord of my life and I'll live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Do me a favor tonight. If you prayed that prayer tonight, if you prayed that prayer, I want you to type in that comment spot, I prayed that prayer. I want to start tracking those that are getting saved on our weekly broadcast every week. So many people are getting saved and I want to make sure that we track the salvation of others. Type it in that spot, right in that spot there. I want you to pray. I want you to type in that spot. I prayed that prayer. Type it in that spot. I prayed that prayer. Type that. I prayed that prayer tonight. That's it. Type it there. I want to make sure that we track you tonight and that God would do something. There it is. There's one. I prayed that prayer. Come on. Come on. Oh, God loves you. Your new name written down. Put it there. Right, there's another one. I prayed that prayer. Come on. I prayed that prayer. Renewing my faith. Renewing my faith. There's another one. I prayed that prayer. Glory to God. There's another one. I prayed that prayer. Glory. Hallelujah. Come on. Come on. Thank you for the souls. Thank you for the souls. There's another one. I prayed that prayer. Come on. That's right. Keep it. If you prayed that prayer tonight, type it. I prayed that prayer. Thank you for the souls. There's another one. Thank you. Thank you. There's another. Look at the souls that are being saved tonight, that are being renewed tonight. People that are being renewed tonight. They're being recalibrated tonight. There's another. God bless you. I prayed that prayer. Thank you, Jesus Christ. Glory. Hallelujah. You're being renewed in the spirit. I thank God for you. I love you and I'm praying for you tonight. It's my heart's desire. If you would, every you know, we 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 do so many opportunities to be a blessing to so many people as we feed families and continue to do the things that God has called us to do. And I say to you tonight, I appreciate you for the gifts that you share and the things that you've given to us in ministry. God knows I thank you and I appreciate you. I'm going to ask you to do it again tonight. People are still writing it. I prayed that prayer. I prayed that prayer. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, hallelujah. They're, give, they're putting our giving things online tonight. In the, and as they put them up, those are the giving opportunities in which you can, um, in which you can uh, give tonight. I would that you know that every person that can sow a $20 seed in this service, and if you can't, don't worry about it. Just give the best seed you can give tonight. But I would tonight that every person would sow tonight. So in the service on tonight. It helps us to do the thing that God has called us to do. Your giving not only opens a door for you, but it opens a door for people that you don't even see. You make way and you make room for yourself. 
And Jesus said, the least one that you help, you help me also. And how we love the Lord and we thank him for the opportunity to be able to share and to give. The giving opportunity is on the screen now. You can give by Giveify. You can give by Cash App to the church. You can go to the church's website. You can give through there. And I say to you, thank you. I've had calls and I've gotten emails. I've gotten emails as far as Nigeria. But people are blessed by the broadcast. And I thank those that are watching us from the continent of Africa. Thank you. I love you. I'm praying for you there that God would help you in the country where you are. I pray for those that are in Japan and other countries across the waters are far off. I pray for your safety today as God has blessed us to reach the world. I pray for you today. I thank God for your lives because God is doing a new thing in your life. God bless you. So tonight, give into uh, the ministry tonight and I promise you every seed that you sow tonight will go toward the purpose in which it's been sown. Church of the Harvest is good ground. It's a great ground to sow in. I love you in Jesus' name. What a mighty God we serve. You know, I'm glad about, I'm glad that he didn't let the enemy triumph over me. He didn't let my enemy have his way in my life. He didn't do it. He made the enemy get back, behave. He made the enemy stand back, get back, behave. That's the kind of God that we serve. Those I've given tonight, God bless you. Thank you. If you want to sow into me, there's my cash app information. I appreciate whatever gift you sow tonight. I thank you in Jesus' name for your gifts tonight. I love you in the Lord tonight. Let me pray this prayer, Father, in Jesus' name. Thank you for the gift, the giver. Bless them now in the name of Jesus. Not one home is going lack because of what we've done tonight, but bless it in Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Come on, clap your hands and give God praise. I thank you tonight. Come on, thank you tonight for joining me tonight. Here's a song I want to close with tonight, a song I want to close with tonight. It's entitled, He Did Not Let My Enemy Triumph Over Me. Aren't you glad tonight that he didn't let the devil have his way in your life? No, he didn't do it. Here it is right here. Hallelujah. God bless all of you tonight. The song is for you. Now I know God favored me. He wouldn't let my enemy triumph over me. Now I know God favored me. You wouldn't let my enemy Come on, keep on giving Triumph over me Triumph over me Over me You wouldn't let my enemy Triumph over me Now I know God favored me. He wouldn't let my enemy triumph over me. Now I know. Now I know that God favored me. He wouldn't let no no triumph over me. Triumph over me.
destroy him over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, 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 Lord. Thank God he wouldn't let me. Oh, no. You kept your arm around me too long. Try it for me. Yeah, no, no, no. Try and pull me. Cancer couldn't kill me. No. Try and pull me. The coronavirus put his hand on me. No. Try and pull me. Try and pull me. Good night, everybody. Good night. I love you in Jesus' name. I love you in Jesus' name. Have a good night tonight. I love you. Keep my family in the prayers. You have a good night tonight. Good night, everybody. I love you in Jesus' name. May the grace of the Lord be with you. In Jesus' name. Good night.